Storm Elise, a Keke Genkai that never was truly explained in the series, and what if her collide? <laughs> yeah, today's video is going to be on exactly that concept, covering what if Naruto had Storm Elise. And while I know this is a topic that isn't exactly the rarest thing in the world, this scenario is going to be different just because I said so. It's not going to be different at all. It's pretty much going to be a copy and paste of everything else, but you're still going to watch it, so enjoy. Hey, Ross, sauce it up. We start a story with Naruto looking at some masks at a shop in the village. Naruto would be pushed away and have a mask thrown at him by, well, the shopkeeper. As he would ask him, why, why did you do that? The shopkeeper would turn back to him and say, get out of here you demon, there's a mask, take it, it's tainted by your touch anyways. As Naruto would look at him and say, why, why did you do that, I, I didn't do anything. And the mask keeper would tell him to get out of here as he would hold the broom up and tell him that if he doesn't leave willingly, he'll have to force him to. And as Naruto would sit there, he would simply start getting up as he would dust himself off and he would begin walking away, but he would notice the same thing that's been happening all too often. Everybody would give him that same stare. Everybody would look at him in that way. And Naruto would look at the villagers as he would say, stop looking at me like that. I'm not a monster. I haven't done anything. But the villagers would simply say, he's a demon. They would begin muttering and some of them would say that he's unwanted. As a couple of the villagers looking at Naruto, a little kid would actually pick up a rock and say, You killed my mommy! As he would throw it at Naruto, and Naruto would be none the wiser, seeing as there's a bunch of like muttering going on. But it's from here that a lot of villagers would actually begin uh, assisting the kid, and they would all begin tossing rocks at Naruto. He would get angry and say, Stop! Please! Please! Stop! Stop! As he would yell out, and suddenly... His chakra spikes and bolts of lightning powerful enough to, to kill somebody would go off in all directions as every civilian that was nearby would get killed by the volts and die. Following this flash of light and electricity going off all over the place, Heruzen would have definitely seen this flash of light and everybody who was hit by the lightning bolt just died. Hiruzen at this point would send a bunch of Anbu to stop citizens from getting close to that area and from here he would arrive to see Naruto pass out on the floor as he would just think to himself oh dear but Naruto would like he before he passed out he would have said I, I didn't mean to but he passes out and from here Hiruzen would simply think oh boy as from here he would take the young Naruto off where from here he would take him into his office and he would then make a request for one of his finest shinobis to arrive, Kakashi Hadake. From here, he would begin to be told that he's going to be having a new mission, to train Naruto. From here, he would begin to tell Kakashi about some of the origins of that Naruto, you know, how things have been up to this point, telling him that the boy is gifted with the chakra of the Nine Tails and a strange lightning kick again Kai. I believe it's Storm Elise, but it's unlike anything I've ever seen, saying that it's his job to train Naruto to control it. Telling him that since he has a pretty strong affinity for, towards lightning chakra, that he believes he is the most person suited for the job. Not only that, but he did train under his father, and if anybody else was to do it, he doesn't know how they would shape him. So, he would tell Kakashi that that's his job, and he would then proceed to tell him about Naruto's childhood, about how, as a baby, he showed signs about having incredible power but never something like this he wants to keep what happened today secret and kakashi would nod as an unconscious naruto in the office would wake up years later at the door to the Ganon academy ready to join team seven during the time that you know uh Hiruzen would have told kakashi about what happened basically naruto in this version just doesn't have whiskers and the only other little change to the story is that he would have displayed these lightning abilities when he was a baby because when people would hold them their hair would like randomly like with static shock just rise and it would get like super spiky at the top but that was really all that would have ever happened every now and then he would have shocked naruto when he tried to play with him but that was it 
And so Hiruza never expected for any of this to ever happen whatsoever, especially not at this young of an age. But seeing as Naruto is going to be growing up to be someone very formidable, he definitely needs to be trained. That said, jumping back to what had happened, like I said, an unconscious Naruto would wake up years later at the door to the Genin Academy, ready to join Team 7. However, yeah, we had a, we had a time skip. Surprise, surprise, a four-year-old Naruto to the point where he's now 12 and outside of the Academy Gore, about to be graduating. Yeah, it's a time skip. From here, I need to tell you guys what happened. But first, I, I, I need to tell, talk to my person who makes my scripts. Karen! Karen! We, we need to be more original. The, the, the fans are starting to hate this stuff. Like, come on. We, we, we gotta get the fans what they want. Alright? Alright. Anyways, um... So, uh, now I've talked to my imaginary friend and, um... Anyways, so what he learned during this time skip is basically uh, how to control Chakra. He learned the fundamentals of being a ninja, Taijutsu, Ninjutsu, Genjutsu, and Kenjutsu. Because from you guys, what, what you guys could see from the thumbnail, the man has a sword in his back. And it's not there for no reason. It's there for a purpose. It's because Naruto is actually a sword user and he loves to channel his lightning Chakra through his sword. That's one of his favorite things to do. He learned how to do that from watching Asuma, seeing as he was around Kakashi for all these years, he definitely would have met the other Jonin senseis. Not that closely, but he knows how they tend to operate. Not only that, but Naruto was actually part of the Yanbu while he was growing up. By the age of 10, Naruto was able to join the ranks of the Yanbu, and it was incredibly impressive. Seeing as the first couple of years were spent working on Naruto's fundamental skills, obviously he wasn't there yet, but as time went on, he went on to learn Chakra and ended up mastering three natures. The first two were Water and Lightning, seeing as those two were the components for Storm Release. The next one was Wind Release, and the reasoning for that is just due to the fact that he has another natural affinity for that as well. And one that he is currently working on at the moment is Earth Release, but that one is actually a little more trickier for Naruto. However, he is able to weave about three jutsus of that nature, so he's getting somewhere. That said, Naruto at this point would know the multi-shadow clone jutsu, and at this point Naruto would be a force to be reckoned with. He has a ton of storm release jutsus at his disposal, and with three chakra natures comes a ton of jutsus. Not only that, but he did learn from the copycat ninja, who knows over a thousand jutsus. So when I say Naruto has an insane repertoire, trust me, it's only the beginning of how powerful this man is about to be. Keep in mind, I know many of you guys might be thinking, yo, Naruto's a bit too OP off the bat. Hear me out. Naruto has a strange ability. Hiruzen wants Naruto to be tamed when it comes to that ability. So Kakashi being a lightning user, he decides, why not? And Kakashi being one of the best senseis in Naruto, I think would definitely be able to bring out the best in Naruto. So having him be this powerful, honestly, is kind of a nerf. But I want to start slow and gradually build our way towards more of a powerful and capable Naruto. Even though he already joined the ranks of the Anbu and is now an extremely proficient ninja who honestly could go on to be a two-man squad with Kakashi, is going to be having to learn how to interact with other kids, seeing as he never had too many times to do that. He didn't end up going to the Genin Academy ever, and this is actually his first time going to actually show up there. Not only that, but he never even ends up meeting Hinata or saving her as a kid. He never meets soccer and he never gets bullied as much as he was in the original. His personality changes a ton and it's more akin to that of a young Kakashi. Just because Naruto was, well, raised by Kakashi himself and is in the Anbu, he has more of a dark personality where he is more akin to completing his tasks than anything else. So yeah, Naruto is quite powerful. By the way guys, in case you guys just heard my phone go off, that was my notifications, my bad. Anyways though, um. So, hear me out. So, as I said, Naruto was standing outside of the Genin door, and he would walk inside. Suddenly, Iruki would say, Hello guys, this is uh, your new classmate. You might be wondering why he's here on the last day of school, but that's because he simply got moved up through the grades just because of how, you know, how, how amazing he is. He'd proceed to hype him up to the class, and the class would be like, who's that? Because Naruto looks completely different to what they would have expected. He has a scar on his face, which he would have gotten during his time at the Anbu. And everybody would be looking at him with some of the girls muttering, he's kind of cute. But overall, the general consensus for Naruto would be that he's a little bit of a mystery. 
Jakamara would be thinking, what a drag. A new kid that we could potentially be paired up with. Uh, gets worse and worse every year. But from here, Sasuke would be looking at Naruto. As he would just be staring him down, thinking to himself, he's definitely strong, but he's not a new Chiha. But from here, Naruto would simply go on to say, not a new Chiha, but... <clears throat> So what of it, as Naruto literally just broke the fourth wall. <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. That doesn't happen. I just I just didn't know what to say next. But anyways, though, so Naruto would go on to sit at the back of the classroom, and this would be the day where they're taking their finals. They would go on to take a written portion, which Naruto would ace with flying colors, and from here, they would all be taken outside to do an obstacle course by throwing kunai, shuriken, and also performing the shadow clone jutsu. Naruto would do this easily, being actually the top in the class, and when it comes to the final test, it would be hand-to-hand -hand sparring. Now, the person that Naruto was to spar against is actually going to be Sasuke himself, the rookie of the year, versus a talented shinobi that got moved up all the way to the ranks. This is a match that everybody was extremely hyped for, and as soon as Iruka would give the go-to, everybody would watch diligently, as a bunch of villagers would actually be running around the gates to see the Uchiha fight, but from here, they would watch as Sasuke would rush in, throwing kicks and punches, which Naruto would weave with a kind of bored look on his face. As suddenly, Naruto would proceed to get into a strange uh, fighting style, as he would then hold the kunai out in front of him, a fighting style very similar to that of Kakashi, and from here, he would go on to rush in as he elbows Sasuke straight in the gut, sending him flying back, but from here, Naruto would weave hand signs behind Sasuke, causing Sasuke to be caught by an earth, earth mud jutsu, and from here, Naruto would say, what wind bullet jutsu as he shoots a gigantic wind bullet that shatters the wall behind him and sends Sasuke flying back as Sasuke is just utterly knocked out of the ring and from here Uruka just goes wow that's incredible two chakra natures at such a young age everybody who's watching would be thinking this kid he's incredible and a lot of the girls in the class would be like mm, you know what I'm saying he's kind of nice you know and I want him but Naruto would not pay no mind to this, and from here, he would proceed to say, so is that it? And Iruka would nod, telling him that he passed, saying that tomorrow they'll all be told what team they're on, and to come early, early, early. And so, everybody would do so. The following day, everybody would be assigned their teams, and just like usual, Naruto would be on team 7, with Sakura and Sasuke on the team. Sasuke because, well, he's an Uchiha and he has a Sharingan, and Sakura just to kind of even things out, seeing as she is smart, but she's weak, so that's that. That said, however, three hours would go by and Naruto would already be expecting this, knowing that Kakashi, he's always late. But from here, he would finally arrive three hours later as Naruto would simply just be doing image training in his mind, as you know, he's just passed out on the desk, just no cares in the world. With Sakura, she tried to talk to him at first, but Naruto just kind of pushed her away, being like, yeah, you can stay over there. I don't want to talk to you. But, like I said, Kakashi would come in and pretty much inform the group to meet him outside. As they would, and from here, he would ask them about their goals and aspirations. Sasuke's would remain the same, Sakura's would remain the same, and Naruto would simply go on to say that he wants to become a powerful shinobi and the greatest swordsman in the world. As from here, Kakashi would say, sounds about right. From here, he would proceed to tell the team to meet him at a certain spot tomorrow, and he would tell them not to eat anything. And he would then look at Naruto and say, oh, and Naruto, I'm gonna make sure you don't eat anything, starting right now. Naruto would look at him and say, ah, okay. As from here, Kakashi would look at Sakura and Sasuke as those who were just confused. They're like, do you guys already know each other? Naruto would proceed to jump off the building, and from here, Kakashi would reveal that that was nothing but a shadow clone. As following this, what would end up actually going down is that Naruto would proceed to essentially um, meet up at the spot the very next day, where the team would pretty much proceed to, um, how do I put this, wait for hours on end. Eventually, Kakashi would arrive, and when he does, he would inform the team that pretty much what they're going to be doing is trying to take bells from him. However, seeing as he's probably too powerful for them anyways and they won't get the bells, he has a new test. They're going to be fighting against Naruto. N Naruto would be like, what? As Sasuke and Sakura would be like, we have to fight against him? Kakashi would then go on to explain that Naruto is pretty powerful in his own right. 
and that just because he's also a Genin, they shouldn't underestimate him, telling them that he has at least the strength of a low tier Jonin, if not uh, like mid tier Jonin, as they would both kind of like be like, what? He's that strong? But from here, Kakashi would toss the bells to Naruto, who would then proceed to body the squad for the next following hours. He would destroy them, not letting them get anywhere near the bell because Naruto doesn't understand the concept of holding back. Sakura and Sasuke would have both been hit by a couple of Naruto storm release jutsus. One in particular that caught Sasuke and Sakura both off guard was a kunai technique where he attached a string to kunais and threw a bunch causing them to get into a trap where if they touch the, the 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 string they get electrocuted sasuke tried cutting it with his kunai to kind of be smart or whatever but as soon as he did that the electricity current that naruto had with his attached to the uh, string itself would pretty much cause it to just electrify sasuke and it cause his hair to be spoofy and spiky as from here, Sakura would giggle with her hair also being up, and Kakashi would be like, so that's time. You guys didn't get the bells, but what was I expecting? You fought against Naruto. He sighs and then proceeds to tell them that, you know, they did decently well. And telling them that, I mean, I guess he can roll with the squad. But from here, he would proceed to say... Nah. By the way, when I when I say say, I mean like he's thinking this, not actually saying it. So he would just kind of look at the team before then saying, you, you failed. He would then proceed to tie Sasuke and Sakura up to the pole. And Naruto would then go on to talk to Kakashi, telling him that he's not in the mood to try to go wait for another squad. Telling them that their teamwork will be worked on for the following next two weeks that they'll work on D-Rank missions. He'll be sure of that. Kakashi would look at him, nod, as Naruto from this point forward would go on to explain Kakashi's rule, telling them that this exam was about team. And seeing as they pretty much fought together that whole time while not destroying, displaying the, the biggest signs of teamwork in the world, they might have hope after all. And so, from here, for the following two weeks, as I said, Naruto would proceed to straighten the team out, telling them that they need to work together if they want to be a good squad, because no squad is complete unless they trust each other and have teamwork. However, one thing that Naruto would notice is that Sasuke is bittersweet about the whole thing. He feels inferior to Naruto, but Naruto would go over to Sasuke telling him that there's no reason he should compare himself to him, that he's been in the Anbu since he was 10 years old. He has at least eight years of experience over Sasuke, if not more, considering who he trained with. And so from here, Sasuke would be like, you trained with Kakashi sensei for this long? With Naruto saying, what do you think I've been? The name's Naruto Uzumaki. You don't remember that name? You don't associate it with the demon fox, the Jinchuriki, that kid that nobody liked? And Sasuke would then have a flashback thinking back to when he saw Naruto once as a kid and thought, that's you? But from here, Naruto would dispel his shadow clone as all the information would go back to him and he would have been at home, passed out the entire day. Following these events, Naruto would proceed to go on, as I said, the two weeks and then eventually the Tazuna mission would be briefed with Team 7. Now, once the Tazuna mission does end up arriving, I think that a reasonable thing to have happen here is that the squad pretty much gets down, down talked to by Tazuna, just like usual. And eventually the only change that would happen would be the demon brothers. Now, when they both rush in at their direction, Naruto and Kashi would act like completely badass ninjas. And Sasuke and Sakura both watching this would look at the example that Naruto and Kakashi just displayed. Perfect teamwork. From here, they would go on to walk for a couple more hours with Sasuke and Sakura, no, no clueless as to, you know, the, the aspect of how dangerous this mission truly is, but Naruto and Kakashi knowing exactly what they got into. However, this isn't something they both can't handle, so Kakashi doesn't go on to press Tazuna about this, simply deciding that he'll ask him about it once they arrive to the Land of Waves. That said, about two hours from then, a thick mist would arrive, and from here, a gigantic sword would have come flying at them, as Kakashi would tell the entire squad to dodge, and from here, we would see Piccolo throwing Gohan into a mountain, yelling, DODGE! As, <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to throw that Team 4 Star reference in there. But, anyways though, what would end up realistically happening is Zabuza would land on the sword and he would then go on to tell Kakashi that he wants to fight him, that he's heard many stories about him, and then looking towards the direction of Naruto as he would say, So, 
You were with Naruto as well. Seems I'll have my hand, hands full this time around. Zabuza would then go on to say, Haku, come out. As from here, Haku would reveal himself from the bushes as he stops, uh, you know, cloaking himself with his aura. And he appears right next to Zabuza on top of his sword as well. As Zabuza would say, this might be interesting. Now from here, we would have a battle raging on which would pretty much consist of Zabuza versus Kakashi. And if I'm going to be honest, this time around we have a Kakashi who trained a bit more than a canon just due to the fact that he was with Naruto, the son of Minato, and he wanted to always make sure that, you know, he set a good example for him, seeing as he was pretty much a big brother to Naruto, kind of. That said, Ice Release versus Storm Release, this is about to be insane. Like, that that's all I'm going to say. This is about to be an insane battle. The battle, like many others, would begin with Naruto and Haku rushing at each other. They would test each other with basic attacks, Taijutsu alone. From here, Haku would end up taking out two Senbon needles, to which Naruto would reciprocate this by taking out his blade, saying that he's a worthy opponent. He would have a smirk appear on his face as electricity would begin to coat the sword. And from here, Naruto would blitz at Haku as Haku would be forced to reveal his full speed. Sasuke and Sakura would be watching as Sasuke would grit his teeth thinking, I'm useless. They're so, so strong. How did Naruto get this powerful? But Sakura would simply be holding the kunai in front of Tazuna say, don't worry, they won't get here. With Sasuke pretty much proceeding to simply watch the battle as Naruto would throw one attack after another at Haku and Haku would be forced to jump back and, you know, kind of regather himself as he would jump back and Naruto would come in at insane speeds, coating himself with his electricity to make himself fast would actually proceed to land inside of Haku's ice domain. Now, when Haku would end up uh, releasing the ice crystal mirror jutsu, Naruto would say, pathetic, this has nothing on my storm release Keke Genkai, as he would then proceed to reveal that he has a Keke Genkai as well. Kaku just thought that it was normal lightning release, but now the lightning would have turned a strange white color. And from here, Naruto would have gone on to pretty much let his electricity go wild as it destroys and shatters Haku's ice mirrors. With Haku watching with a dumbfounded expression thinking, impossible. But from here, Naruto would blitz towards the direction of Haku with a kunai on his neck saying, checkmate. However, when he would go to slice it, Haku would reveal that it was nothing but a shadow clone. And from here, Haku would come in as he would proceed to use a ice like jutsu where he shoots out a bunch of tiny little senbon at naruto's direction naruto at this point would begin to use a sword to pretty much slice down each and every single one of them except for a couple which would actually land on his legs slowing naruto's movements down just enough for the playing field to be evened out now at this point naruto smiled as he would yank out the senbon needles from his leg and say that was interesting but from here haku would go on to say that this battle is going to be a little more tricky than he thought as he would proceed to create a ice sword and naruto seeing that would think incredible but from here he would coat his own blade with lightning saying that this is the sharpest blade it's covered with lightning you're just ice you're done as from here Haku and Naruto both using their top speeds would lunge at each other and in anime swordsman like um, fashion Naruto would land as he would sheath his sword back in and Haku would fall to the floor as simultaneously Kakashi would land a Shidori into Zabuza's heart killing the squad in case you guys haven't seen a uh, quick shameless plug here in case you guys haven't seen what if naruto went rogue i'm telling you go check it out it's awesome it's so good like the story is so fire so if you haven't seen it already go check it out but uh enough shameless plugging out of the way zabuza and haku fought at the ground they're dead ggs <laughs> team seven won and the mission is now complete however that doesn't mean that everything's done they still have to take Tazen into his house, to which from here, Inari would go on to be an annoying little runt telling them that they might as well give up, that they have no hope in defeating Gato and his men. But Naruto would say that they already defeated the Shangas, saying to Inari that he shouldn't be worried about anything and that if anything, his village would go on to prosper in just a week. And so, they would end up helping Tazen with the reconstruction of the build, of the bridge, naming it the Great uh the team great uh the team seven bridge yeah the, the team seven bridge because why not i mean this time naruto and kakashi both are kind of responsible for doing a lot uh, actually you know what let's just stick with great naruto bridge just because it sounds good 
and it's just something to reflect on on a later occasion. That said though, Team 7 would inevitably end up going back to their village after handling Gato and his men when they would have inevitably arrived, and once they do arrive to Kanoha, this is when Naruto would end up actually just walking past a Konohamaru. In the original, Konohamaru bumps into Naruto and from there he chases him around so he bumps into Konkuro. Since that never happens, they don't end up meeting uh, the Sand Squad early on and instead they are simply informed of the Chunin exams by Kakashi himself. He would actually end up telling Naruto that if anything he should already be a Chunin but seeing as he never even went to the academy, he wasn't exactly allowed to just be given a Chunin vest. However, telling him that he has no doubt that he'll become a Chunin, if not Jonin, during these Chunin exams, telling him not to go too crazy. But Naruto would nod as he'd say, <laughs> you know what, I'll do my best to hold back this time, for you brother. As from here, Kakashi would have a smile on his face and then proceed to tell them all that they can go off. Naruto at this point would report back to his place where he would just take a nap and for the following week would proceed to train on a new attack that he's been working on. It's a certain cloudy jutsu but from here we would end up having the entire squad meeting back up together for the inevitable shooting exams after they had their strange little tests completed i guess you could say that said team 7 would walk through the doors only to be encountered by team 10 or team guy i believe from here lee would go on to challenge sasuke telling him that he's heard great things about the rookie of the year and then, looking towards Naruto, as he could just feel a pretty powerful battle aura coming off of Naruto. From here, Naruto would go on to tell Sasuke that he shouldn't even indulge this kid in a fight, telling him to save his energy for the exams. But Sasuke would go on to scoff at Naruto, telling him that he can't tell him what to do. He would then go on to get folded like an omelette, and Sasuke would then be in full regret, with Naruto just holding it over and being like, I told you so Sasuke, you should have listened to me, I have more experience than this of you. Sasuke would turn to him and tell him that he doesn't know anything, that just because he has a couple years of experience on him doesn't mean a thing. He'll catch up. He'll, he will. He's an Uchiha after all. And from here, Naruto would go on to say that it doesn't matter what he is. He has a powerful Kiki Genkai. He'll never be his equal. And from here, Sasuke would grit his teeth as he would go on to go inside the tuning exams and they would all take the test. Now, Team 7 would end up passing just because they end up answering the final question and they end up going to Anko where she would proceed to inform them about the force of death telling them that they need to sign these waivers because they're probably gonna die everybody would be like hey yo we're gonna die like what do you mean and she would just be like yep if you're a ninja and you want to take these exams there comes a risk of death so sign away or don't I don't care but from here everybody would sign away and after this team 7 would go into the forest only to be met with a gigantic snake that rushes out their direction with a man on top of it. From here, Naruto would take out his blade as he would jump up into the air and slice the snake's head clean off, with the man jumping off into a high tree as he would then land, and his aura would go on to pretty much hit Sasuke, Sakura, and Naruto. Naruto would be ahead of the group as he would simply be thinking to himself, what power? But from here, we would see as Sakura and Sasuke are both shaking with fear, with Sasuke thinking to himself, move damn it, move! He pierces himself with a kunai causing him to finally be overcome, uh, overcome the fear with pain. And Orochimaru noticing this would think to himself that this young Uchiha boy is almost pissing himself from fear. But then looking towards Naruto, who would look at Orochimaru and say that he is very powerful. It doesn't take much to tell that, telling him that he's going to enjoy this battle, as he would unsheath his sword and go on to pretty much light it with lightning chakra. As he proceeds to look at Orochimaru, who at this point would lick his lips and say, fine. He would create a, a bunch of hand signs as he would shoot a ton of snakes at the direction of Naruto, who would then go on to pretty much shoot a fireball jutsu, which would pretty much like destroy the snakes before they could even get to him. Naruto is not the best at fireball jutsus but you know he can create one or two that said he would then go on to rush towards orochimaru's direction who would literally pull out the kusanagi blade from his throat and he would then go on to rush in at naruto just completely outclassing him when it comes to swordsmanship and speed 
and Naruto being completely outclassed and pushed against a wall would begin to pretty much start panting heavily as a smile comes on his face and a little bit of that bloodlust begins leaking out of Naruto. Keep in mind, this is not the same Naruto we know in canon. This Naruto loves the thrill of battle. He loves fighting strong opponents. This was embedded to him by being in the Anbu, working under Hiruzen, being in missions where he has had to kill countless people. This is a different Naruto. This is not the same one we know and love. However, it is a bloodlusted, excited, hungry for battle Naruto that would rush in at Orochimaru at his top speeds as Orochimaru would be impressed. However, he would begin completely outclassing Naruto even more, showing even more slight hints of what his true power is. And once Orochimaru begins to get tired, he would pretty much proceed to hit Naruto away far, sending him crashing through an entire tree. With Naruto finally being able to regain himself, by the point that he does this, Orochimaru would have already gone on to kiss Sasuke on the neck, and when Naruto sees this, he'd be like, hey yo, that's kind of gay. But from here, Orochimaru would say, it's it's June, bro, it, it's it's Pride History Month, please, um, none of this shit, none, I will not be having this, and Naruto would be like, oh yeah, you're right, my, my bad, my bad. But from here, he would go on to pretty much get enraged by seeing Sasuke fall down and saying that, oh, so he's not enough of a challenge to keep the battle on him. That's what's enraging him. Not the fact that Sasuke's hurt. I mean, that, that adds a little bit too, but you know, Sasuke just had his, uh, his battle taken from him by Sasuke almost, and that would piss Naruto off. He would end up activating his one tail state of case of his uh, chakra mode. And from here, he would rush in at Orochimaru at unparalleled speeds to what he had before. Not only that, but during the battle, Naruto would be learning, watching Orochimaru's movements, his attack speed, his precision. It's all going into Naruto's memories, and these are things that he's not going to forget. Eventually, Naruto would weave a bunch of hand signs and shoot a laser beam from his mouth. Not the one that Madara used, because that one was embedded with Sage Arts, um, and that one is hundreds of times not hundreds of times stronger, but it's a lot stronger than the one that Naruto's using, and a lot faster. His is moving at like half of light speed, which is still insane, but you know, it's not light speed itself. That said, Orochimaru would barely be able to dodge this attack, and after seeing Naruto use this insane move, he would be extremely shocked. Naruto would use a bunch of kunais as he would coat them with electricity and throw them at the direction of Orochimaru, who would dodge in the air, and one of them would actually end up hitting him, causing Orochimaru's body to be electrocuted and caught off guard completely. That said, we would end up seeing Naruto then being like, finally, I got you. As we would then go on to see Naruto have a smile on his face as he takes out his blade once more and then says, finally, I get to try out this new jutsu. It's in perfected, so I'll only have a good 10 seconds before it wears off. But from here, he would use the storm release to coat himself with the lightning chakra aura as he would blitz at Orochimaru's direction, with Orochimaru thinking, What? As before he could even blink, Naruto would have cut his head clean off and Orochimaru would fall on the ground. As Sasuke would be watching this with Sakura nearby him and Naruto would then fall onto one knee as he holds himself up with his blade and says, I did it. He passes out and, um, you know, Sakura would then be forced to grab Naruto and Sasuke and pretty much mend them. This would pretty much lead to almost what would have happened in canon, except this time when Naruto and Sasuke wake up, Naruto was able to stop Sasuke and not Sakura. He tells him that he needs to calm down and Sasuke would look at Naruto before then wanting to fight him, but Naruto telling him that this isn't the time and place. Sasuke would try to fight against Naruto, but Naruto would actually clash with him perfectly with Sasuke realizing that even with this new power, Naruto still leagues ahead of him. That said though, they would end up making their way towards the Chunin Towers, where they would be told by Kakashi and Iruka sensei that they passed this section, telling them that they're going to be needing to wait for the final battles. And so, three days would pass leading to these battles going down. Now, Kibo versus Naruto would go down, and I'm not even going to be stressing how much of a just dud battle this is going to be. Naruto would immediately just take out a kunai and coat it with his lightning uh, storm release. As you know, he rushes in, and he would proceed to pierce uh, Kiba, just kind of slashing a straight line through his chest. Then proceeding to kick Akamaru straight into the wall like a straight G, as Akamaru would proceed to whimper there, and Kiba would just be knocked out. Like, the man is not getting up after that. 
That said, the rest of the battles would pretty much play out just like they do in canon, and following these events, we would end up being told about the one month training period. However, this is where I'm going to be taking a break, and future me is going to be taking over the series. Bye! Picking the story up on the one month training arc is definitely going to be interesting. One, because Sasuke doesn't have the shark on it. Two, because this is going to be the first time that Naruto trains and is away from Kakashi. He's not used to this. He's been training with Kakashi since he can remember. And so when Kakashi would end up informing Naruto that he's going to be taking this one month to train Sasuke to unlock his Sharingan and also to teach him a Jutsu, this would actually shock Naruto quite a lot actually. And so, yeah, Sasuke would end up actually going off to train with Kakashi in order to learn the Sharingan with Kakashi telling Naruto that he's confident Naruto could get solid gains on his own during that one month. And so, for the first time in forever, Naruto would have all this time to essentially just work on that jutsu that he used against the fight with Orochimaru. Did that jutsu actually kill Orochimaru? No. I'm sorry, but it, it didn't. Orochimaru is literally a snake, and this man survives anything. I don't know what it's going to take to kill this man. Like, his arm's soul were re ripped out, yet he got his arms back. Like, it makes no sense. But just know, the man survived somehow i i really don't need to explain it that said though during the one month training naruto would simply be working on his uh on his lightning cloak and so actually let me turn on my full notification seeing as that just went off but uh yeah so naruto would actually have pretty much just started off with the first three days pretty much working on his lightning cloak during the fourth day he would have gotten pretty lazy and tired and decided that he's going to be taking one day of training off Either way, he should already be more than sufficiently strong enough to handle anybody in the Chunin exams, according to Naruto. That said, however, what he would end up doing is going to the hot, uh, hot springs where he would end up seeing an old man on top of a toad with white hair as he would go over to him and be like, dude, what are you doing? And the old guy would turn around with a dopey expression on his face saying, uh, I'm researching kid, get lost. But Naruto would look at him and say that he's not going to go anywhere, that he should stop peeping on those girls. As the girls would look towards Jiraiya and be like, oh my god, you know, they cover themselves up and Jiraiya runs off. From here, Naruto would appear right behind Jiraiya as he taps his shoulder and Jiraiya's like, how would you get there, kid? But Naruto would simply just be like, I followed you, dude. I used the body flicker. Anyways, what were you doing creeping on those girls? And Jiraiya would say, I wasn't creeping. I was researching. He pulls out his Makeout Taxes series book and he's like, wait, you're the author? From here, Naruto would say, I read all your books. And Jiraiya would say, wait, kid, aren't you like, like 12? And Naruto would say, yeah, but I mean, I, I snuck a couple of Kakashi's books every now and then. And Jiraiya would just kind of like have a smile on his face saying, well, I appreciate that kid won my autograph. Naruto would say that that's not that that definitely I was about to say that's not necessary, but I don't think that's the truth. Let's be honest. Naruto is more of a serious person, but Kakashi is still Kakashi and he still likes to read his uh <clears throat> his hentai <coughs> books. So Naruto, wanting to know what those were, at one point reads one of the books, and he's a guy, he's a boy with a, a high amount of, you know, SCX drive, you know what I mean? So <laughs> he likes what he sees. Seeing as Naruto in the original, like pretty much uh, created the pervy jutsu, I, I have zero doubts that this version of Naruto wouldn't be interested in that. So. That said, after Jiraiya would sign his autograph, from here, Naruto would go on to ask him, you know, what the author's doing here. And he would say that he's actually here to, to you know, just, just look around the village. Naruto would then go on to say that he is also the, uh, the, sorry, the legendary Sanin, right? One of the legendary Sanins, at least. As Jiraiya would say, eh, interesting kid, uh, you know your stuff. He jumps back and proceeds to do his little dance, being like, I am Jiraiya, one of the legendary Sanins. And Naruto would be like, yeah, I figured. I fought another one of you, uh, Orochimaru. I killed him. And when Jiraiya hears this, he's like, what? But from here, Naruto's like, yeah, I killed him. I, I cut his head clean off. Jiraiya would say, this kid cut his head clean off? And he would say, what's your name, kid? And then he would look at the eyes of Naruto as he can just see like the same color of Minato, the blonde hair. It's unmistakable. Naruto would say, the name's Naruto Uzumaki. And from here, 
Jiraiya would say, I was looking for you. How about you train under me for a month? Naruto would say, that's great. I honestly was looking for somebody to train with. As he would say, what you gonna teach me? And from here, Jiraiya would say, a lot kid, a lot. That said, let the one month training arc commence. During this period of time, Naruto would begin building a relationship with Jiraiya. Now, what the relationship was uh, like, like bloom? Yes. And no, they're not as tight as Naruto and Jiraiya are in the original, but they have different likes and dislikes to each other, seeing as this Naruto is a little different than the OG one. That said, this version of Naruto would actually go and uh, research with Jiraiya every now and then. And during the one month, Naruto would have simply continued to work on his lightning cloak. Is this lightning cloak a little different than the one that the Rekaga uses? Absolutely, because this one is made out of storm release lightning and it's a lot more potent than the normal one. So Naruto's version is a lot harder to control and master. That's why it took so much chakra out of him. It's a jutsu that requires a massive amount of chakra to use when you don't know how to. However, once Naruto was able to master the technique, it will require a much less amount of chakra to use. So that's what Naruto is going to be working on. That said, he would also end up learning the Rasengan in a matter of one week. And when it comes to the Nine Tails, he would actually train with Jiraiya to actually be able to perfectly use one full tail of the chakra from Kurama. That said, during this time, he would have also ended up learning the Toad Summoning Jutsu and honestly would have had a blast training with Jiraiya. Naruto never knew anything but training with Akashi, and switching that up was a good pace. During this time, Sasuke would have learned how to use about two bursts of the Chidori and also would have ended up unlocking the one Tomoe state of the Sharingan. So that's something. His fighting prowess is not nearly what it was in the original, seeing as this Sasuke is heavily held back by the fact that he didn't unlock the Sharingan early. And yes, I know Sasuke technically unlocks it against Itachi when he sees him kill his clan, but he never was able to use it again until he fought against Haku, which is why I say he doesn't unlock it. That said though, the one month training arc would be over and Naruto wouldn't have quite mastered the lightning cloak technique, but now he's able to use a comfortable 20 seconds of it. After it runs out completely and the man is just sh like absorbed of chakra. So if he was to use it like 10, 10 seconds of it, then um, it'll be a lot more productive, I guess you could say. That said, what would end up happening from here is that everybody would pretty much end up meeting up in the uh, Chunin Exams Tower place, the arena, I guess you could say. And Naruto's first battle would be against none other than Neji Hyuga. The way that I see this battle going is essentially Naruto and Neji meeting up in the middle, with Neji spouting a bunch of nonsense talking about he's gonna win and he's destined to become a, ch uh, get a Chunin, but Naruto simply being like, blah, 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 blah. Gosh, you're annoying. From here, Naruto noticing that Neji was a close range fighter would decide that he's going to be doing one of the only things he could think. He would flood the arena. Using his water style, he would shoot out a ton of water from his mouth. And from here, Neji would pretty much just smirk saying that that's not going to work. But Naruto would say that the reason for doing that wasn't so that he could drown him, seeing as he already knows Neji is most likely able to actually water walk. The reason for that was this. He would stomp his foot down as Storm Release would charge from his both hands as he begins to charge it through himself and then his entire body would charge it all the way to the bottom of his feet as it would spread through the water and Neji would be forced to jump onto the walls. From here, Neji is in a very uncomfortable position and out of nowhere, Naruto would decide that to get him to jump in the water, he would proceed to create a water dragon jutsu, a twin water dragon jutsu that would lunge at neji in the wall not only that but it would be coated with storm release lightning because of the fact that naruto's water like like insane like ocean almost that he would have created in the arena would be coated with lightning which is a conductor of electricity so when it lunges at neji it's going to hurt so neji would dodge for as long as he possibly could until eventually he couldn't no more and he was hit with the lightning water from here neji was caught off guard just long enough for naruto to blitz at him use a rasengan and knock neji clean out winning the first battle the next one would then be sasuke versus gara and i don't see this changing whatsoever the only real change is that i think they're going to be a little more late than the original but that's pretty much it 
That said, however, what I see end up ending up happening is Gara, of course, still running into the forest and Naruto chasing after him because he just knows that he's going to be needing some help. Everything in terms of the uh, village would pretty much remain the same. And when it comes to Naruto catching up to Sasuke, this would happen a lot faster than in the original because this version of Naruto is ex an expert in reconnaissance missions and things of that sort. So not exactly too complicated for this version of Naruto. That said, when he would end up encountering Tamari, she would end up telling him that he's not going to be going nowhere, but Naruto would tell her that he has no time for this, as he charges a huge amount of lightning concentrated in his hand, and he would aim out five fingers to just shoot bolts of electricity that begin to chase Tamari no matter where she goes. She would throw her fan attack at Naruto, which would actually cause the lightning to not do anything. The lightning still rushes at Tamari. Boys, did you guys hear my dark barking in the background? My bad, but uh... I'm not changing that or re-recording any of this, so deal with it. Anyways, though, <laughs> um, seeing as I already was interrupted, I feel like this is a good spot to tell you guys about something new to the channel. Seeing as most of you guys don't really watch these videos and you guys mostly watch them as audiobooks, I don't really see any reason to edit this portion, so I'm just going to be keeping it in the video. That said, as of lately, I am now going to be making a members join button. Now, it's pretty stereotypical. You're not really going to be getting the most insane things in the world. You're just going to be getting early access to videos if you join. And you're also going to be getting, um, what's it called? Like priority reply to your comments. That's really it for the first level. It starts at $10 and you get early access to the videos. Like, you know how I also always schedule my stuff and it comes out like two days or one day later. You can get the video that same moment if you just check the members only perks that said if you join the second tier i honestly forgot what the perks are but i mean i, I me personally it, that perk is just there in case you have a lot of money and you have nothing to spend it on and you want to give it to your boy then uh go ahead but if you don't have a lot you don't have to just keep watching the videos keep liking the content subscribe to the channel turn on the polls notifications if that's all you can do and i'll appreciate you nonetheless that said let's get back into the amazing what if so Naruto would have inevitably ended up running into Sasuke and Gaara. Now Sasuke, at the moment that Naruto arrives, would be held up in the air by Gaara as he's choking Sasuke, who already used both of his Chidori attempts, and is pretty much about to die. However, Naruto would come in as he slices off Gaara's hand, clean off, and Gaara would look at him with anger in his eyes as he says, You, I must kill you. But Naruto, seeing that Gara is using a tailed beast transformation, would think, how about I even out the, 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 the stakes? As from here, he proceeds to close and open his eyes, revealing KCM. No, 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 not KCM, but uh, the first tailed stage of the nine tails. KCM, imagine Naruto part one KCM already. That'd be insane. That'd be a that'd be monstrous. Could you imagine like you're you're Gara and then you just see Naruto bust out KCM in front of you? I'd be terrified. Anyways, though, so Naruto, as soon as he activates his one-tailed state, would rush in a Gara's direction and using his abilities of using a sword and using a bunch of lightning release attacks would shoot at Gara. But I'm honestly not sure if lightning would really work too much on sand. Let me look it up real quick. All right, I looked it up and you will all be happy to know that every time Naruto's going to be hitting Gara with his lightning storm release attacks, they're literally going to be making, it's literally just going to be making the glass. No, not the glass, but the sand almost like glass, like a rock-like substance that just kind of like keeps Gara from using it. But seeing as like the entire world is pretty much made of sand, it's not that much of a handicap. But Gara is not really used to this, so this does come as a bit of a surprise. However, once Gara proceeds to get a little too cocky, Naruto decides that it's about time that he whips out one of his jutsus that he doesn't use too often. He would end up formulating a cloud in the sky, one that Gara would not notice, and from that cloud, a bunch of electricity would begin building up within itself, as eventually, Naruto would lure Gara into the perfect spot for the lightning bolt to just come down and strike Gara. Not exactly like Kirin, a lot weaker, but it pretty much has the same effect in, you know, the way that it's used. That said though, the lightning bolt striking at Gara would be extremely effective and Naruto would be the victor. Afterwards, Naruto would kind of talk no jutsu Gara, forcing him to change his attitude and from here would throw Sasuke in his back as he would say that Sasuke caused a lot more trouble than he was worth. 
As from here, Sasuke is taken to the, uh, the medical ninjas and he is then promptly healed. So following this, I think that a good thing to do would pretty much be addressing Jiraiya and Naruto going off to meet Tsunade. And seeing as nothing really changes until we finally end up getting to the point where Itachi and Kisame bust down the door and are like, Naruto, come with us. I'm just going to be picking off there. <laughs> that said, Naruto would open the door to see Itachi and Kisame standing there looking at him menacingly. And when Naruto sees this, he would immediately jump back as he would decide that he needs to whip up some hand signs quickly. Naruto would not think twice before Naruto proceeds to pretty much close and open his eyes, revealing the Kurama chakra state, his one tilt state. And from here, Naruto would blitz towards Itachi's direction, but Kisame would use his sword to block the attack and drain some chakra out of Naruto. Naruto wouldn't feel this too heavily, however, and from here would go on to fill the room with shadow clones as Naruto busts out the wall and goes to the rooftop. From here, this is when Jiraiya, or no, this is when Jiraiya would see this and begin heading his heading on his way there. However, Itachi and Hisame are both pretty much trapping Naruto, not letting him leave, and Naruto would decide that he has to do something about this. However, he would make one grave mistake. He looks towards Itachi's eyes. From that moment, the battle was pretty much sealed, and Naruto just proceeded to start fighting mid-air. As Itachi and Kisame watched as Naruto started pretty much just punching and throwing hits at the air, not noticing that he was even under Itachi's genjutsu. That is, until Jiraiya shows up and ends up using the toad mount jutsu, snapping Naruto out of it. And once this happens, Itachi and Kisame would retreat just like in the original, leading to no real changes. That said though, one thing that kind of would change is Jiraiya and Naruto's interactions after this and Sasuke not even actually arriving on time because when he arrives, he's too little too late. So he gets enraged at that and Naruto tries to calm him down, but Sasuke just tells him that he has no idea what it's like, saying that he never had a family, saying a bunch of horrible things to Naruto. Jiraiya would say he does have a family. I'm standing right here, his godfather. Watch your tone, kid. As from here, Sasuke grits his teeth and goes back to the Leaf Village with my guy. As from here, we would end up having events kind of play out similar to the timeline. Tsunade would still end up making a bet with Naruto, who pretty much plays her for a fool, creating the Rasengan instantly as he proceeds to hit her with it and actually cause her to get knocked out, seeing as she was already too drunk to react. Now, how would he have been able to heal, hit her with it? He would have actually used his chakra cloak to actually uh, activate it for just like five seconds, giving him just enough time to pretty much blitz at Tsunade and hit her straight in the stomach with it. So she would end up having to unfortunately, or I mean fortunately, come back to the village. However, there still was the issue of Orochimaru who they still had to handle. And when Naruto sees Orochimaru alive, he's like, I thought I killed you. But Jiraiya would say that he uh, he doubted that he would have anyways, seeing as Orochimaru always seems to escape death in one way, shape, or form. And so Orochimaru proceeds to kind of get bodied by Tsunade uh, and Jiraiya after she gets over her blood uh, curdling uh, depression thing or whatever. And Naruto would in inevitably end up defeating Kabuto. I know Tsunade had a hard time fighting against Kabuto, but this version of Naruto was too fast for Kabuto to react. I mean, let's be honest. He has the first tail and the chakra state that he can fall back on. Not only that, but he has the experience to back up the combat when it comes to Kabuto. And so I believe the battle would go something like this. Kabuto at first would begin to actually hit Naruto, land a couple of blows on him. But once Naruto realizes that this is not the time to be playing any games, he goes into serious mode and promptly proceeds to defeat Kabuto, soloing the man and jumping in to actually help Tsunade and Jiraiya fight against Orochimaru, who at this point doesn't have his arm and is forced to retreat with Orochi, with uh, Kabuto. Following this, we end up having Tsunade, Jiraiya, and Nar to return to the village with Tsunade being crowned the fifth Hokage. And after this, I think that one good thing that could happen is... Uh, let me think, let me think, let me think. Um, Actually, nothing could happen. Sasuke still ends up leaving with the sound four and the team's still assembled. So uh, Sasuke, you're getting in the way a little bit. That said, this whole entire thing would pretty much go the same all the way until when Naruto ends up having to fight against Kimimaru. 
and for me to cover this battle in its proper form i'm going to be needing to put on some uh, nice nice music now you guys won't be able to hear it but i will so i'm gonna pause the video real quick all right i'm back naruto versus kimi maru let's get into it the battle would commence with kimi maru looking towards naruto pointing one of his bones at his direction with Naruto saying that he needs to get past him and that he's not worth his time. However, Kimimaro would shoot bones straight out of his hands as they would go past Naruto and almost hit him square in the face. Naruto would turn to him with an angry expression saying, How dare you? As from here, he would go in and take his sword out and say that he doesn't have time to waste. He's made it this far and he needs to bring his teammate back to the village so that he doesn't end up going towards that path that Orochimaru chose. He's heard all about his tactics with Jiraiya and he's not about to let his buddy go into the darkness. And so from here, he would turn towards Kimimaru as he would say, you're going down one way or another. As from here, Kimimaro would proceed to get into his fighting stance and Naruto would rush in trying to use Taijutsu against Kimimaro. However, he would quickly come to realize that that's not going to be working. And so eventually he would end up having to take his sword out and then proceed to actually fight Kimimaro in that way. Kimimaro would actually take out his bones and using that he would actually pretty much try to fight Naruto as if he had swords I guess you could say. So when this ends up happening, Naruto was able to actually have a amazing battle kimimaru even though he is sick he's holding up in like incredibly and naruto is actually having one of the greatest battles of his life he's having a thrill it's almost even eventually kimimaru would decide that it's enough playing games and he would activate his curse mark state as he would begin to use more and more of his blood kick again i no, not blood kick genkai but bone kick genkai abilities and naruto seeing this would end up deciding that it's about time that he revealed his own kick genkai he would begin using his own attacks to try to counter against Kimimaru, and eventually he would create a cloud in the sky that would be charging up one final attack in case all goes wrong. Not only that, but he would be shooting lightning beams from his hands, just small ones that are meant to just zap Kimimaru and pretty much throw him off guard. And he would also try using a beam of lightning that he would shoot out of his mouth that Kimimaru would dodge and kick Naruto into the air as he would then jump in there and begin to hit Naruto back down to the ground. Naruto would have to roll out of the way as Kimimaru would come down with a bone crushing kick. And from here, Naruto would jump back into the air as he would dodge and dodge and dodge. Four. Of Kimimaru's attacks. Kimimaru after this will then be kicked by Naruto as it's revealed that Naruto's eyes just turned red and from here the battle would begin to be more evened out as Kimimaru and Naruto were going at it blow for blow for blow each one of them not giving up a single bit of ground to the other. Eventually Naruto would decide that he, this is enough games. He would create a bunch of shadow clones to distract Kimimaru as Kimimaru ends up using his giant bone um, domain thing that he used in the original and he would destroy all of them leading to Kimimaru actually getting ready to perform his final attack naruto would decide that he deserves his strongest and he would end up activating his lightning cloak just for two seconds briefly wanting to get actually five seconds let's be let's be more honest naruto would end up charging up his final attack and holding his sword at the exact position to just slice at him like he did to orochimaru however before he could even do so kimimaru would fall to the ground dead and Naruto would hold his hand up into the air as the cloud of chakra that was up in the air would be sucked back into his palm and Naruto would sheath the sword back into his spot as he would then deactivate his chakra cloak and say, you are one worthy opponent. I hope you rest well. As he would then run off towards the direction of Sasuke and yell, Sasuke! As from here, Sasuke would turn and say, Naruto. He would say, get out of my way. And Naruto would look towards Sasuke as he would say, what are you talking about, Sasuke? You gotta come back to the village. This isn't you. Come on. Grabbing him by the arm as Sasuke would kick Naruto and then punch him straight in the jaw with an uppercut. As Naruto was sent back and wipes the blood off of his mouth saying, so it's like that. All right. I'm not playing Sasuke. You're coming back to the village with me consciously or in a body bag. It's one or the other Sasuke. There's not a choice. So you pick now. If you get into a fighting stance, I'm going to bring you back in a body bag. Sasuke would then go on to seal his face. As from here, we would have a scenario so similar to those videos that, that are like, what if Goku was super extra prepared, where Goku is just too powerful for the enemy that he faces, and that's kind of what happens here. Keep in mind, OG Naruto, who 
while was extremely powerful, was able to solo Sasuke. Almost. Until the end, when Naruto pretty much failed. But if he was able to do that then, then what does that mean for this version? Who actually has access to the first tail off rip and has access to the lightning cloak, has access to three chakra natures, has access to a bunch of fundamental skills that the original Naruto lacked. Exactly. He is able to utterly outclass Sasuke, bringing him back to the village against his will. Meaning Sasuke never actually ends up going towards Orochimaru, and instead has to opt with training with Kakashi during these three years, while Naruto ends up going off to train with Jiraiya for the three year time skip. And that would pretty much end up concluding the first part of Naruto. Naruto Shonen Jump? Or part one. Yeah, part one. It's called part one. Anyways, though, following this, the three year time skip would happen. And after the three years time skip would happen, Naruto comes back to the village like a whole different person. His hair is way longer and he has it in sort of a bun position with his jacket being remodeled to being more of a purple and black one. From here, his blade that, you know, he used in the first part of Naruto would not be the one that's in the thumbnail. Like the purple one, that's not the one he was using. He was using a normal katana blade. However, now he actually ended up acquiring the purple hill blade that was extremely powerful and actually has a special ability. He ended up getting it in the land of Whirlpool when he and Jiraiya would end up going over there to do a mission. And the blade actually has the innate ability to channel large amounts of lightning into it. Similar to the one that, uh, similar to the blade Kiba that one of the legendary swordsmen uses, except it looks different and it's a longer blade and it's a single blade, not dual wielder. That said, Naruto is now going to be a lot more powerful. And yeah, that said, though, what I think would end up happening from here is Naruto returns with a full mastery of at least at the very least five of Kurama's tales being accessible to him. Not only that, but the rest of the chakra natures, they got mastered within that time period. And Jiraiya even opted to teach Naruto a couple of tojutsus, with Naruto having a bunch of time to actually master the Rasengan and a bunch of mini variants. Not the Rasen Shuriken, but the Rasengan and adding different chakra natures to it. Like a lightning Rasengan that pretty much disappears. Yeah, he ends up getting access to that one as well as a storm release Rasengan that pretty much like it, it it's like a super small orb that gives off large amounts of lightning just going off of it and if it makes contact with you it's going to shred you in a to a molecular level we saw what the lava style Rasengan like Rasen Shuriken did this one pretty much creates it's a lot weaker because it's not a Rasen Shuriken but it is very powerful because it destroys you and it burns you at the same time. It like melts your skin if it makes contact with you. It's it's extremely broken. I don't know how to explain it. But Naruto gets very, very powerful. It's not funny. But from here, what I think would end up actually happening is Naruto would actually end up going back to the village and reporting to see none other than Sakura and Sasuke ready to meet him. They would end up going to a ramen shop where they would reminisce back in the good old days and eventually would end up having a fight against Kakashi, who would get utterly dismantled. In the original, Naruto and Sasuke, who were way weaker than the version of Naruto that is here, was able to beat him. This is an absolute wash. So, they would eventually be informed of the team uh, regarding retrieving Gara, and all of the events kind of go the same until they would finally end up arriving to the cave. Where this time around, when Sakura faces against uh, Sasori, yeah, Sasori, they're able to do very, very decent against him. And when it comes to Naruto versus Deidara, it's not fun. It's not fun at all. Deidara actually has to fight against Naruto, who at this point is way more OP than the version of Sasuke who was able to defeat him. So the battle goes something like this. Naruto would shoot from his blade a long version of lightning that would just shoot Deidara down to the ground from his bird. And when Deidara would pretty much land, he would say, yo, that was uncashed money of you, bro. But from here, Deidara would proceed to pretty much shoot exploding bombs at Naruto's direction, which Naruto would dodge using a mud wall jutsu. As from here, he would shoot a gale palm attack wind, wind style at Deidara's direction, and Deidara would feel a small amount of wind pressure like, like 
beam at him, which causes his hair to be pretty much like blown back and his eyes to slightly wince, seeing as the wind was pretty powerful. However, Naruto comes rushing in and immediately whips out his blade, saying that he's an Akatsuki member and he's not going to be taking it easy on him. Reverse hand grip style and everything, as he would coat Storm release into his blade and from here he would jump up into the air, just short of landing in front of Daedara as he stabs his blade straight into the air and from it shoots a giant lightning bolt which would strike right onto Daedara's body and it would immediately send Daedara into a state of like, like just shaking as his body would pretty much start melting, like the skin would start melting off and Daedara would just scream as he dies instantly. Naruto would then go back to see Kakashi and Sasuke who were like right behind him and he would say, I killed him. And they would tell him he should have kept him alive for intel, but Naruto would say that that's not necessary as they could just take back Sasori. But they would go to meet Sakura who killed him. <laughs> yeah, she kills the man. So yeah, it looks like they're not going to be getting any intel after all. They returned to the village and this time around, Gara would still be brought back to life due to Lady Chiho's sacrifice in the few years that she had left, and from here, Gara would go back to be the Kazikage, building a strong foundation with the Leaf Village, to which at this point when they arrived back, Asuma would have been pretty much told that, you know, he Asuma would have been, what's it called? <sighs> Why am I having a mental break for it at this moment? Oh my god. This always happens. Asuma would have been pronounced dead and Shikamaru would want his revenge big time. Jiraiya would end up saying that he wants to go off to fight the leader of the Akatsuki, but this time Naruto's not having any of it. He ends up going off with Jiraiya, and so he's not going to be present when it comes to the battle against uh, Hidan and Kakazu. Instead, Sasuke is actually one of the people who goes off to actually help Shikamaru with the battle against the two Akatsuki members, seeing as he wanted to fight two of them. And so they handle that, but when they come back, Sasuke is greeted to a letter by a crow from Itachi telling him that their battle is going to be happening sooner than he expected. And so Sasuke would get his things together seeing as he needs to get ready for the final battle against his big brother Itachi. He would go off and Naruto and Jiraiya would pretty much just be doing their mission trying to sneakily enter the rain village. They would do so, and everything would be going smooth until eventually, Pain would arrive in front of them with all six paths linked, and Conan would be flying above. Immediately, the battle would commence, and all of them would immediately begin to completely outclass Naruto and Jiraiya. However, we know that Naruto in the original was able to destroy them with nothing but a punch, so while they are very powerful, they're not very durable. And so, that kind of evens out the battle. Naruto and Jiraiya at first would be overwhelmed by the power of the, you know, the Rinnegan, but eventually as soon as they begin to kind of figure out what it is, they would both begin to have a much easier time fighting against them. Six paths, they'll make it work. Two against two, two on three, they'll figure it out somehow. Naruto would be tasked with fighting against the diva path and Jiraiya would have, uh, the, I don't know, but I don't know. Just just know Jiraiya has to fight against three paths and Naruto has to fight against two paths other than the deep path. Conan is going to be a thing, but she's kind of something that they have to deal with later, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Okay, look, just 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 know the battle goes down something like this. Jiraiya and Naruto both get back to back as they both pretty much end up getting to their full power mode. Jiraiya would activate his imperfected version of Sage Mode, and Naruto would activate his Lightning Chakra Cloak, as well as the Five Tails of the Chakra of, of Kurama. And once he's able to do this, he would immediately blitz towards one of them, the, the Path of Pain that is able to summon the animals. Once he does this, he would proceed to actually destroy the animals, the animal path, not the animals themselves, since you can't really destroy summonings, I don't think. That said, as soon as Naruto would destroy that one, Jiraiya simultaneously would have actually destroyed another one. And so that brings their grand total of two to two. Naruto would then go in to destroy another one. However, the diva patch would push him away and Naruto would blitz towards his direction during the five seconds that he has, as the other path of pain would shoot a rocket at him and Naruto would get blown back. Naruto at this point would understand that their visions are definitely linked and Naruto and Jiraiya would be bouncing information off to each other as they're both fighting against these paths. 
tracks. Eventually, the diva path would decide that they're both getting too, like, they're both understanding too much for their own good. And so they would all end up stepping it up a notch, and Conan would end up jumping and using her paper release kick again, Kai, to actually completely outmaneuver Naruto and uh, Jiraiya. Once they would start being put on the back foot, Naruto would decide to tell Jiraiya that they are going to be needing, like, to do way more than this. And so, Naruto would proceed to say that he is going to be needing to use one of his most powerful jutsus. As Jiraiya would nod, and from here, Naruto would go on to say, after this, the battle will be leveled. And from here, from the sky, immediately, a dragon would just jump down at them, two times more powerful than Kirin. And from here, it would absolutely demolish all of the paths of pain except for the diva path and Conan, who was able to create a huge amount of protective barrier around herself with her paper kick again, which barely was able to tank all of the damage, like barely was able to take a lot of the damage. She still receives a lot. And so after this, Jiraiya and Naruto both step in front of both the Diva path and Conan. As Jiraiya would say that he's going to be taking care of the pain path, and Naruto would say that he has Conan, telling Jiraiya that he better not lose. As from here, Jiraiya would say, Have you known me to ever lose? And, Na and Naruto would smile, saying, Never sensei. As from here, they would both rush at their respective battles, with each other coming out on top. After this, they would end up tracing back the uh, the pain rods back to Nagato, and Conan would actually be spared, since Jiraiya has a connection to the students. When Jiraiya would end up arriving, he would ask Nagato where he went wrong, what happened, and after hearing out Nagato's backstory, he would end up deciding that they should not be, you know, like they, while well, they should be punished for their actions, seeing as they still did all the horrible things that they did, he can understand why they did what they did. And Naruto, hearing this, would think to himself that that's true. The world is a horrible, cruel place, but going about it by trying to face horrible with horrible is never going to work. I mean, two wrongs don't make a right. And so they would end up pretty much telling Nagato that he is going to be needing to work pretty, pretty hard to pretty much atone for the things that he's done. So Nagato would proceed to be taken back to the Leaf Village alongside uh, Konan, as they would both actually be taken into the village and accepted as new members. So the pain assault never happens. Also, uh, Taka isn't there to actually attack Killer B, so that's another thing. The Akatsuki just lost two valuable members. Deidara was defeated, Sasori was killed, Kidan was killed, and Kakazu was killed. That's literally six of the most powerful Akatsuki members in total. These things were taken care of so fast, and not to mention the Itachi battle with Sasuke, that pretty much goes the same as it does in Kanan. There's no reason for me to believe that Sasuke is going to be any weaker just because he doesn't go train with Orochimaru, seeing as, you know, he has other jutsus that are kind of going to be able to even out the playing field he still learns kidding and he's still able to actually take out itachi well not really take him out but kind of be given the victory by his brother seeing as he didn't ever truly want to kill him and so that leads to the end of that akatsuki member once that happens obito would actually tell sasuke about everything and once sasuke hears the truth he ends up wanting to destroy kanoha so i guess that kind of adds him to obito's repertoire but it's not going to be anywhere near enough. Sasuke wants to go and destroy the Hidden Leaf Village, but with Nagato and Konan there, and Tsunade, one of the greatest medical ninjutsu people ever, would actually be there to try to heal Nagato's illness. Do I think he's going to be fully healed? No, but I think he's at least going to be able to walk and, you know, kind of not be a, a tool that can't do anything. Tsunade would definitely be able to get him out of that using Hashirama cells, because... That always seems to be the thing that uh, Kishimoto jumps to, so I'm going to be using that as a plot device to kind of heal Nagato somewhat. Not only that, but she's also going to be asking Nagato why he never used the King of Hell to heal himself. Nagato would explain some random excuse as to why he never did that, because I've always wondered that. Why doesn't he just use the King of Hell to heal himself? It, it doesn't make any sense. I know the King of Hell would definitely be able to heal that. Not only that, but why didn't they use the King of Hell to heal Itachi? It could have been an easy fix. But anyways, I digress. Eventually, Obito would come to the Leaf Village after attacking the, the Hidden Cloud Village, and the Hidden Cloud Village would end up pretty much calling for a Kage Summit. However, when the Kage Summit is called, the Kage Summit would end badly. 
instead of the terms and conditions being put in the right direction like they were in the original what actually would end up happening is that killer b would be a little too um aggressive with his approach and tsunade being the person that she is would be aggressive right back with the red kage saying that he she needs to calm down that you know while she's a kage she's not as powerful as he is and naruto would get in the way saying that if he ever threatens her kage again that he will lose an arm and a leg to pay for that price with killer b saying that he needs to back up and naruto explaining to him that he is not going to tell him what to do he would activate his lightning cloak and the third raikage would do so as well as no the fourth raikage i think it is as he would proceed to tell him that he needs to calm down so nade would call naruto off and naruto would tell him that he would have lost his life in that battle flashing a hint of the nine tails energy at him telling him that they will not be helping them in the search of his brother by the way i know i said that uh, killer b was there but i i'm gonna change in that and say that darui was there and when darui sent storm release from naruto he was like that's impressive one cool moment also would have been that darui would have kind of tried to get in the way but naruto would say that his version of storm release is everything that naruto's is but weaker and that naruto is better than him in every way shape and form that he's just a knockoff ripoff and so from here the leaf village would kind of just be in a state of trying to see what happens next with them wondering whatever happened to sasuke after he went off to fight against itachi however they would have their answers very soon seeing as sasuke would arrive back to the village and try to wreak havoc and also quick thing naruto would be there at the village with nagato as being some backup he would also explain to them how uh obito's running uh, no not running on abilities but sharing on abilities work and so when obito would arrive they would all kind of be waiting for him when obito does arrive i genuinely think that naruto would get killed obito is a extremely powerful individual and having kakashi there would actually end up evening out the battlefield but the hidden leaf village would inevitably still be uh, destroyed so i wholeheartedly believe that obito would actually end up killing naruto and with sasuke being on obito's side wanting to destroy the leaf village i don't think that he's going to be the tipping scale but i think that obito by himself should definitely be enough to you know do quite some heavy damage to naruto and the way that naruto is going to be coming back to life in this version is going to be via the um <clears throat> the uh how do i put this so obito rips out the nine tails and that's how naruto dies sakura tries to keep him alive but eventually nagato comes in and uses rene rebirth to revive all of the ninjas who have previously perished in battle and in the explosion that ensued and also would have ended up reviving naruto simultaneously who ended up getting a six paths amp and once that happened an obito who doesn't even have the ten tails chakra was completely unable to react to the dual to the dual uh, combo wombo that was about to come his way in the form of naruto and kakashi who pretty much have perfect teamwork seeing as they trained for like eight years on end jiraiya and naruto had some pretty good teamwork and that was proven by their battle against nagato however with nagato nagato losing his life he would have ended up entrusting the renegon to naruto and when naruto was given the renegon it was an absolutely busted matchup naruto using his abilities of storm release with now the sage of six paths amp on it is able to perform insane amounts of feats his lightning is as fast as light light itself and each one of his attacks packs so much like electricity to them that his lightning became black like his lightning became black and this was like his most powerful version of it he was able to create weapons creatures he was able to do so much with a storm release that it wasn't even funny he would have essentially proceeded to create lightning binds around obito that he would actually shoot into the kamui dimension so that way uh obito was unable to teleport into it because naruto would shoot a giant orb of storm release that would just shoot out clouds and clouds and clouds of lightning into it so if obito wanted to dodge attacks by using kamui every time he did that he would just be getting hit by that attack so obito would be pushed back into a corner and inevitably be killed by naruto leading to him then having to sadly defeat sasuke and since this version of events would have sasuke not exactly uh being too open to listening naruto would just have to beat him into to a pulp to make uh, sasuke listen to reason and so 
Naruto would stand atop his destroyed village with everybody cheering his name. Naruto! Everybody's excited and the entire village just welcomes Naruto with open arms. That's all he ever wanted. Since that day where he accidentally killed a bunch of villagers, he has felt bad for that. And that has been one of the attributes to his change his personality. But now, he saved so many lives and he's one of the sole reasons why the Leaf Village survived. So Naruto's proud. And Naruto would then go on to be named the 6th Hokage. Subscribe for more!